Hi there, today in Typical Books, I'm going to talk about two different extreme novellas, Dead Inside and Gathering of Evil. Now, of course, I've got them right here. They were two short extreme novels, and why I'm reviewing them both together is because they're novellas, there isn't a lot to say, and I don't want to devote too much time to something that I've seen so far in reviews and here on BookTube, books that are a little bit controversial. I almost wish that I could take a poll to see which one I should start with first. And I think I'm going to start with A Gathering of Evil by Gil Valley. As mentioned in a previous video, I was put on to the Gil Valley book by Gil himself. He is the cannibal cop of New York. You may have noticed him in court <laughs> for being a cannibal. Thought crimes. A thought crime cannibal. He never hurt anyone. He was a esteemed police officer and then he was caught out for leaving notes sort of like in the cannibal cafe where one of the uh, more recent cannibal killers had left notes. I believe Armin Maves might have used the same sort of chat room but it was a chat room where he talked about kidnapping people and killing people along with other people so it wasn't just him talking about this in a, in a fictional setting in a chat room but in the laws that exist, the things that you say in there and the age you portray yourself as are taken as reality. So if you portray yourself as someone under age and someone over um, the age of consent hits on you, that is considered soliciting a minor. So the same sort of thing if you talk about kidnapping and killing people like your wife, it's taken as nonfiction. It's taken as truth. And that was the uh, point of the whole court case. So he's a free man. He's a free man and he's written this book. He's writing another. He's also written a nonfiction book about the case. So very interesting read if you're interested in that sort of thing. But uh, A Gathering of Evil is basically the fictional portrayal of what the sort of group think chat room of cannibals I keep saying cannibals, of, of fictional cannibal cosplayers would have become in a fictional setting. So it is 100% fictional uh, and it is touted as a very extreme book. And the ideas are very extreme, though the writing is not very extreme. And that is where it, it was for me in a way in the subject matter, because I do like extreme horror fiction very much. This though is not necessarily extreme. It stops short. It pulls its punches. And I believe, it, it, like, I don't know if I'm correct in saying this. It seems that this is a very, very well polished first or second draft where the ideas could have gestated, been fleshed out, no pun intended, and really been something impactful in the extreme sense. But those are sort of held back. And, and perhaps Mr. Valley had had quite enough of being called out on these more extreme ideas because reading the chat transcripts, they are more extreme than this book. A Gathering of Evil from Comet Press. And this came out, what, a couple years ago, 2018. Gil Valley, the former NYPD patrol cop who rose to infamy in 2012 after he was wrongfully accused by the feds for allegedly plotting to kidnap, cook, and eat women, fleshes out his fantasies in his debut novel, serving up a feast of gut-churning horror. Sarah McConnell and Jennifer Miller are two young, attractive New Yorkers leading seemingly normal lives. Unbeknownst to them, they have been targeted by a group of wealthy and violent sadists who meet through the dark web and share some rather unusual and deviant sexual desires, along with a desire to turn those twisted fantasies into reality. Marilyn and Bruce, the wealthy couple from upstate New York, they've organized the event, having gathered this group of people from all different backgrounds and brought them together through a common bond, the lust and desire to kidnap a young woman and brutally end her life. The hunt is on. Will the prey survive this gathering of evil? No, they don't. Spoiler alert. Author of Raw Deal. That's the book. Raw Deal. The untold story of NYPD's cannibal cop. So maybe that'll be a true crime title for me later on. It's written very simply. The writing style is very digestible. If you're interested in extreme horror but don't want to get into anything uh, too visceral or too, too deeply descriptive. This is a good sort of uh, cat and mouse killer stalking people sort of idea. So that is good. It's almost in thriller territory, save the fact that there is brutal treatment of women 
within this book. Very much so. That's the point of it from the get-go and that is the end game. So there's no surprises there if you read the back jacket copy. These are about a group of creepy deviant rich people that want to kidnap and ends up being cannibalized at least one of the females. They want to capture two and they want to sell snippets of this on the dark web for a lot of money and they also want to sell a spot to be uh, part of this torture for very a lot of money a lot and a lot a lot of money and they have so many takers because there's so many deviant people that all seem to be from New York State for some reason uh, that will bid on this and they the stakes get higher and higher as one of the people bidding floats the idea of a barbecue. I've been to a pig roast once and that's sort of how they set it up. Uh, so it works in that these things sort of exist and you can envision them very well, but they don't get too descriptive, quite honestly. I found it lacked a lot of what I was looking for as far as extreme horror. I still wouldn't say that it's not extreme because it depends on what you're used to reading in horror. This could be too much for a lot of people, but if you're a huge extreme horror fan, this would not be enough. I find the first half of the book is like the begats of the Bible. It's just like meeting all of these people and introducing. It's a huge introduction list because there's quite a few cast members, so to speak, and uh, you meet them all <laughs> for half of the book. So if you like that sort of intrigue, that sort of terror, then that uh, does play large here, more so than the extreme gore. Not a bad book, but not as insane as I was expecting. Up next, we have Chandler Morrison's Dead Inside, and this is getting a lot of no star reviews, where, or very low star reviews, and some high star reviews from people like me who really enjoy this sort of extreme horror, a splatter punk esque extreme horror, XXX extreme horror, because there is a lot of porn in here. But yeah, this particular book is getting really good reviews with no stars because it's written very well and it is very visceral. It comes as advertised. It is about a necrophile that meets a baby eater and their love blossoms? Question mark? It's hard to describe. There is agreement that this is very well written and I definitely agree there and that it is hard to give this stars. And I've had a review recently sort of like this where I liken this to The Human Centipede where people knew what to expect going into it. Those trailers hid nothing. The trailer for this so to speak hides nothing. A young hospital security guard with a disturbingly unique taste in women. A maternity doctor with a horrifically unusual appetite. When the two of them meet they embark on a journey of self-discovery while shattering societal norms and engaging in destructively aberrant behavior. As they unwittingly help each other understand a world in which neither of them seems to belong, they begin to realize what it truly means to be alive and that it might not always be a good thing. You can look online for a much better description of what is really going on here as far as all of the necrophilia. There is rampant necrophilia. There is, um, not just rampant necrophilia, it is described very, very clearly. And it is described in terms of a relationship that our main character who remains unnamed is having with the corpses he has at his disposal as a security guard who covers the morgue of a hospital. There is mention of rape as well by the living. And that is something that isn't really debatable. If you're a necrophile, are you raping? Yes, you are because you don't have consent and this is someone who can't give consent and the body does belong to someone, ish, sort of. And it's also a spot where I think that a lot of people who have necrophilic tendencies may end up and continue uncaught here in reality, in real life, right? So it is, you know, a very illegal practice no matter how you slice it. But there are conversations that our character has with living people in this book about rape and about these really apparent activities, whether he is the one perpetrating them or not. There's other victims, so to speak, that he has conversations with that are equally as unsettling as the opening scenes of his lovemaking. And it gets worse because of course he meets the baby eater. And this may be some spoilers, like it mentions it in, in the back sort of vaguely. Um, and this doctor 
who is as warped, if not more so than our main character, who is a necrophile. That's something extremely taboo, but we can wrap our heads around it, right? What the other girl is engaging in is something that is beyond taboo. Putting those two things together in one book, I think is, is really where people can't really do it and, and put it down or finish it and can hardly face themselves for a couple days before leaving a scathing review. Uh, I, I liked it a lot. It was a very quick read. I read this all in one day. It's 160 pages of pure insanity, wall to wall, uh, corruption and, and vile, horrid thoughts. It is very, very visceral, very, very visceral. This differs entirely from Gathering of Evil. So if you had read something lately and looked for something more extreme, if you're a fan of extreme horror and haven't yet picked this up, I think it belongs on the shelves with all the other Deadite Press titles. And this comes from Death's Head Press. So I am going to seek out other Chandler Morrison myself because uh, I really did enjoy reading this. I found it was written very, very well. I could really get into the mindset of the characters and you can get into the mindset of a character who's doing these deplorable things and still link them to things you know and understand because I'll never understand baby eating and necrophilia. But there are other aspects of my life or other people's where I can walk a mile in, in these moccasins. Well, not quite a mile. That would be too far in these particular shoes. A few steps. Ages ago, I had a teacher in a social studies class who talked about visualization tactics and how people will visualize things they want to do before they achieve it. But then he had the whole class envision an apple. He was like, close your eyes, just envision an apple. Um, now, after a few minutes, when everyone firmly had this apple locked in their mind, he said to us, this apple actually exists. You're not coming up with an apple entirely of your imagination. This is either an amalgamation or an exact replica of an apple you ate in 1982 from your aunt's kitchen counter, or an apple that you saw in a famous Renaissance painting, or an apple that you saw on the bus ride here today. Like This is an apple that really exists. You're not coming up with something entirely. Now, if you envision a creature that doesn't exist. You're you're making it up of things you know, the things that exist, and it may not be instantly recognizable, but it's going to have features by and large that exist here. It's almost incomprehensible for us to fully realize something in our own imagination that we haven't uh, dealt with or seen or encountered or had described to us, be it in fiction or reality. So when it comes to something like Chandler Morrison's book, those that are shocked that this idea could be born of a writer and committed to the paper, I, I'm reminded of this Apple thing. And therein lies the rub when it comes to the imagination of extreme horror writers and uh, Dead Inside in particular, is that these apples aren't being conjured from the imagination from another world or entirely uh, irrespective of this world we live in these uh, monsters in here are us exactly. There have been necrophiles, there have been cannibalistic people, and there have been uh, comminglings of that throughout our, our lifetimes. And some really deplorable news stories are woven in here, no doubt. So I'm going to be looking out for some uh, interviews, Chandler Morrison perhaps, and some uh, insight into where the impetus for this particular book came from, and I myself would love to see a sequel. Owing to the very high results that I get from my uh, my favorite top five extreme horror books, there's two more extreme books that I'd like to add to the pile. One, A Gathering of Evil, wasn't really for me, not so extreme. The other one, Dead Inside, very much for me, I enjoyed it very much, and it is very extreme. So I hope you enjoyed that. Coming up, I'm going to talk about some more uh, digestible books. I'm going to be talking about uh, Dean Kuhn's book and 12 Nights at Rotter House. And of course, right now to come down from all that extreme horror goodness, I started reading something a little lighter, The Stranger Beside Me by Anne Rule. Thank you very much for watching and have an ooky spooky day. <laughs>